A few months back, I built this cabinet with a filter around my HVLP dust extractor in order to completely contain the airborne dust particles which were constantly being exhausted from the bag. And I installed ducting to my table saw and my planar thicknesser. Unfortunately though, it isn't really working out. And as much as I hate the idea of having to change this setup again so soon, I think it's necessary for three reasons. Firstly, and most significantly, the one horsepower dust extractor just doesn't seem to be powerful enough. Since upgrading my planar thicknesser recently, it really struggles when the machine is in planar mode. The manual states an airflow of 20 meters per second is required, and my extractor is only managing about 12. Secondly, changing the bag on the extractor was a frustrating process before I built a cabinet around it, but now it's even more annoying. I think there's a much better bagless solution to this problem. And thirdly, I realized when working on a recent project that the cabinet is restricting the infeed and outfeed space to the machine a bit. So I started looking around online at more powerful extractors and I found the following two horsepower machines which were within my budget of under 500 pounds. And critically for me these all run on regular 13 amp supplies. And I wanted a cartridge filter for improved airflow and better filtration which leaves me with one option, the SIP 01992. I think it's worth pointing out here though that I believe all the machines on screen now require the same size cartridge filter and SIP sells these separately so it's worth doing some maths here to get the best deal. I ended up going for the SIP 01992 though and in the interest of full disclosure this machine was gifted to me by SIP. I'm not going to be setting this up in a conventional way though and SIP don't know that so hopefully they're okay with it. Well, I say I'm not going to set it up in a conventional way, but actually, at first, I think I will set it up in the conventional way because I want to test the airflow against my old extractor to see if this extractor is capable of doing what I need it to do. Assembly of the machine is quick, easy, and self explanatory, and SIP do provide a decent manual too. I mentioned earlier my hatred of fitting plastic bags to the bottom of extractors, and my mission is to set things up so that I won't have to do that again in future. However, it's worth pointing out that the fabric bag provided with this extractor has a seam at the top to accommodate the sprung strap clamp thing, which actually makes it much quicker and easier to fit compared with those wretched plastic bags that I'm looking to escape from. Now I'm having a look at the cartridge filter. The pleats at the top are held in place by some kind of resin so that they don't distort. A nice touch. And there are two rubber flaps for cleaning the pleats in the filter activated by a handle on top. There's a strip of self-adhesive backed weather stripping provided in the box to help seal things up when the filter is added on top. And here is my one and I think only complaint that I can come up with for this machine. Even with the weather stripping added and the sprung strap fitted as tightly as I could get it, the cartridge still seems too much of a loose fit for my liking. It still just lifts off with ease. In my opinion, either a thicker and firmer weather stripping should be provided in the box or the cartridge filter should be redesigned to be a better fit. But I'll live with this for now and see if I have any issues with air and dust escaping from it later after some use. I fired it up and was pleasantly surprised at how quiet the motor runs. And the suction seemed excellent. I wanted to test the airflow but it was so high that my anemometer was spinning so fast that it simply couldn't give me a reading. So that's a promising sign. I need to start stripping out the cabinet now and removing the old extractor ready to make space for the new one. But before I do that I'm going to give the cartridge filter on my old one horsepower extractor a really thorough cleaning because I want to compare the two machines side by side. So I'm here with little and large. I wanted to set these up next to each other just so you can get an idea of the size of this thing. It is huge compared to the Charnwood. And that's why I went for the Charnwood in the first place because of its compact size. But obviously it doesn't quite cut the mustard. The airflow on the one horsepower extractor measures about 27.5 meters per second at the port and 24.5 at the end of this run of two meter flexi hose. But with the new extractor, again, I can't get a reading because it's too powerful, even after the flexi hose is added. So I'll do some more testing later in the video. So I'm gonna be setting up the new extractor as a two stage system. If you're not already familiar with what that is, I think it'll be easier for me to explain once it's all set up. But I am gonna need some more components in order to set it up. The first of which is this big plastic barrel. And I wanted a metal one originally, similar to the one that I use on my vacuum extractor. You can get the big 210 litre ones for next to nothing, but I didn't want anything that big. And to get one around 100 litres in size, you're looking at like 90 pounds, which is just way too much. So I settled for this, which is 46 pounds and it's 150 litres, but it's nice and slim and quite tall, which is what I wanted. I also picked up this tiny 20 litre barrel. Obviously I'll explain what these are for as we go along. 
And this massive 100 millimeter cyclone sent to me courtesy of Axminster. And I believe this is the only 100 millimeter cyclone available to us here in the UK. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments. And obviously I've cleared some space here in the corner already, but I suspect I'm gonna have to clear this too. In fact, the more I look at it, the more I think it's inevitable. So I might as well whip this out as well. First, I'm going to make a mobile base with some of these one-way casters that I had spare in the workshop. On top of that goes a four millimeter piece of hardboard just to use as a temporary spacer. And on top of that goes my big barrel. And the cyclone will sit on the lid of the barrel. And I've already made up a piece of 100 millimeter ducting stuck together with some hot glue to help me figure out the position for where the cyclone will need to sit. This pipe was a bit of a loose fit on the cyclone. So I'm using some duct tape as a gasket. And the pipe that I'm using here is regularly available. It's 100 millimeters and it's generally used for ventilation systems, I believe. I set a laser level to the height of the rim that goes around the middle of the cyclone and I mark that up onto the wall. And I take the cyclone apart. The cyclone has a rubber gasket between the two parts, which is good for keeping it airtight. And using some old salvaged bed slats, I'm going to make a simple bracket to wrap around and support the bottom part of the cyclone. I also need to measure the distance that the cyclone is to be placed from the wall and I can mark that up so that I know where to cut away the waste. I found a scrap of 18 mm plywood and I'll cut some notches out so that I can fit it in between the two rails. And then to complete the bracket, I just need a couple of diagonal support pieces and I can trim away the excess. That seems to work well, so now I'll fit the cyclone onto my barrel. There's a rubber gasket provided that I can use to drill out the holes and I use some M6 nuts, bolts and washers to secure it. Stupidly, I then found out that I should have secured the lid of the barrel while the cyclone was suspended by my bracket as it no longer fits. But fortunately the glue hadn't dried yet so it's just a case of undoing a few screws and putting them in again. <laughs> I can now get rid of my temporary spacer and in future for emptying the barrel it's just a case of wheeling out the mobile base so that the barrel drops and wheeling it back under once it's emptied. Next I need to mount the motor above the cyclone, so I get it unbolted and take some careful measurements as I need to align the port with the outlet on the cyclone. I'm going to start by mounting it onto some plywood and I used a spade bit to create some recesses to allow space for the nuts and washers. I'm mounting a cleat onto the wall to help support the weight as it's very heavy. I only have one stud in the wall here too, so I added a long chunky coach bolt to get the strongest possible fixing. Here's where things started going downhill. I'm lifting the motor in place so that I can mark up where to drill a hole for another coach bolt. And then I have to lift it down again to drill it out. And it's really heavy and I'm kind of leaning over the cyclone and barrel, which doesn't feel safe at all. Really could have done with another pair of hands here, to be honest. Anyway, eventually I got it fitted and step away only to find that it was completely on the wonk. Even though I'd used a laser level to get the cleat straight, I hadn't realized that the piece of ply that I'd mounted the motor to didn't have a square edge on it. And I just didn't have the energy to take it down again. So I ended up crudely adding a wedge underneath, which looks atrocious, I know, but at least now it's straight and I'll worry about tidying this up another day. The inlet port on the motor measures five inches or 125 mil roughly, which I need to reduce down to four inches to fit onto the cyclone. And I've bought one of these reducer rings but it's a little bit of a loose fit. Smooth. Gaffer tape saves the day yet again here and it's a nice tight fit and I can hook it up to the cyclone. Interestingly, I thought I would test airflow again to see how much the cyclone reduces the airflow by. And as you'll see here, it seems to be quite a lot. I'll do more testing on this later in the video to come up with some actual numbers. The next component to add is this part that the cartridge filter sits on and I can do away with the bag underneath as I'm going to be using my small barrel instead. I want to add some bulk to the lid though so I'm adding some 18mm plywood and I get it cut out and shaped so that it's a nice tight fit inside the rim on top of the lid. 
I use more silicon here to make it airtight and I can get it fixed with screws. And I can get a hole cut out in the middle. Here I'm getting an idea of where this needs to be placed in relation to the outlet on the motor and measuring the distance. I knew this part was going to sit over my window slightly, but I'm okay with that. This piece of MDF is what this component is going to sit on and I want to leave some space around it, so I'm scribing a line using a domino. I can then center my barrel lid onto the MDF, draw around the hull, get that cut out too, and then mount the two pieces together. And then I want to shape another piece of MDF to sit inside to help seal things up and make it airtight. And this was tricky because this component of the extractor isn't very rigid. It's a little bit flimsy, so it's not always a perfect circle. And shaping something to fit inside it snugly took quite a lot of time as I had to keep removing tiny amounts until it fitted. That piece then gets the same hole cut out in it too, and then I can secure it to the top face of this shelf thing. And then I add loads of silicon. I want a really thick bead to hold it in place both inside and out. And this silicon is going to take at least a full day to cure, so I spent the rest of this day setting up some of the ducting and blast gates. I needed to use some flexi pipe to fit around the back of the cyclone. There wasn't enough space for PVC pipe, unfortunately. I'll leave a link to a video about how I make my handmade blast gates below if you want to see how I make them. I'm just reusing the ones that I've already made before. I also made a cut down the length of this piece of pipe just to hide this gaffer tape join. The following day the silicon was nice and strong, I don't need to add any further fixings here. I made some more brackets to support the weight of this component, it's actually not very heavy but again 45 degree support pieces will make it nice and strong. I'm going to need to cut away part of the window frame to get it sitting flush to the wall. The cartridge filter then gets added on top, and the barrel underneath. And then a small piece of flexi pipe between the two components. I'm going to add the bolts back to this component just to seal it up and make sure it's airtight. I drilled a 40mm hole in the top lid of my large barrel. I'm going to create a window here just so that I can see when it's full, so I know when to empty it. So I cut a piece of perspex and I get that fitted with more silicon and a few small bolts. The next job was to set up my vacuum extractor again, so I started making this thing. So this thing that I just built out of some 24mm MDF looks really simple, but actually quite a lot of thought went into it. I think it's going to solve four issues for me. It's going to give me somewhere to park my pack out toolboxes. It gives me an elevated platform on which to place my vacuum extractor. It also allows me extra in-feed and out-feed space at the planer, as you can see, because it's lower than the bed of the planer itself. Although I've just realized that when I'm thicknessing, this is gonna get in the way. Damn. Right, now I've got just under two meters of in-feed and out-feed space. And the fourth thing was gonna be more flat surface on which to put things, but obviously now that's significantly reduced. And here's the ducting to my vacuum extractor set up, so now everything is installed and ready to use again. So just to explain how this two-stage system is meant to work, basically chips from the planer and sawdust from the saw are gonna come in via the ducting into the cyclone, and the vast majority of it will spin at high velocity down the cyclone and into the large drum. Obviously the suction is coming from the impeller in the motor up here, and some of the smaller fine particles of dust will make their way into this part, and air is exhausted from the motor through this cartridge filter. So after a while, this filter will get some small particles of dust in it, which I can then clean using the handle on the filter, and those fine dust particles should then fall down into the barrel. But essentially adding this cyclone means that the cartridge filter will clog up a lot less, meaning much less regular cleaning and maintenance is required, and also better airflow for the system on the hull, because an extractor can only suck in as well as it can exhaust out. So if this cartridge is full of dust all of the time, that's really gonna affect the suction or airflow at the machine. Another option for installing a two-stage system like this is 
to completely forego this part here and direct the airflow from the motor directly to the outside. That's going to save you loads of space because you don't need all of this bulk in your workshop and it's going to mean that the extractor can exhaust air really effectively but there are some downsides to consider. If your workspace is close to neighbours or pedestrians you're basically going to be polluting the air around them and also if you heat your workshop all of the heated air in your workspace is going to get sucked up through the machines and exhausted outside, which would make for a chilly working environment very quickly. Oh, and I forgot to mention noise pollution, which is another thing you might want to consider. Here's how the ducting to my table saw looks now, and before making any changes, airflow here was measuring around 13 meters per second. And after making the changes in this video, airflow now measures around 20.5. And here's the ducting to the planar thicknesser, which has enough flexi pipe for me to change between planar and thicknesser mode. Prior to this, the airflow measured around 12 meters per second, and now it measures around 21, which is over the 20 meters per second that the manual for my planar thicknesser says is required for this particular machine. However, I wanted to do a real world test. So here I'm running a board through the planar multiple times, and it was in planar mode where the extraction was the worst prior to upgrading. So hopefully now there won't be that many chips. On the table, there's a few, and underneath, oh dear. I'll try the thickness of two, which prior to upgrading the extractor worked reasonably well, or at least better than in planing mode, and here are the results. So I can't help but feel a little bit disappointed by that experiment. I was expecting better results, and I do wonder how much of it is down to the loss of airflow caused by adding the cyclone. So I've temporarily rigged up this thing so that I can test the air first with the cyclone, and then without. With the cyclone hooked up, readings were averaging 20.4. And I'll run the same experiment again with the same length of pipe, but this time the cyclone isn't connected. And without the cyclone, it seems to be averaging around 30, although that seems to be the limit of this anemometer. That is a 32% loss in airflow. So what I've learned in this one is that the amount of ducting actually doesn't affect airflow as much as I expected, but adding a cyclone affects the airflow way more than I expected. So you either have the convenience of a cyclone or you have good airflow. It seems like you can't have both unless you have some crazy powerful extractor. So in theory, this barrel should have captured the vast majority of dust and chips. And yes, it certainly looks like it has. And this barrel should have very little in it. And that all seems to work incredibly well. I can barely see a trace of dust in there. So I suspect I won't be emptying this one very often. I will say though, it's not the easiest job to get this clipped back on. You kind of need three hands to do it easily. I wasn't sure if I would need to install some kind of pressure release valve in this drum to prevent it from imploding on those occasions when you accidentally have both blast gates closed. But I've discovered as part of this project that that's not really an issue. I'll show you what I mean. At the moment, this blast gate is closed and this one is open, but you'll see if I close it, it's absolutely fine. And I think that's because this is a low pressure system. If I repeat the same experiment with my high pressure vacuum system, you'll see that this happens. But because I'm using a metal barrel, implosion isn't a problem. Now I've just got to wait for a visit from my electrician to wire up my remote control so that I can operate it via remote instead of reaching up like this. I want to say a quick thanks to Scott Skelton, who gave me some advice about this project via a woodworking forum. I'm not sure if you're watching, but thank you if you are. Thanks also to Axminster and SIP, and thank you for watching.